lot of uh, conversation going around about hitters explaining their mentality and why they can't beat the shift. How are you, pal? Good, good, Mike. Um, yeah, I, I, seriously, I've been doing this for quite a while, and I can't recall too many stories where everybody has an opinion. You know, it's, it's well, really incredible uh, the the level of uh, of one you know back and forth that this thing has generated. Um, I'm kind of caught off guard by it too. Yeah, well, you you talked to three guys for this piece. Did you talk to other guys that you didn't use for this piece, or did you just catch up with those three guys, Murphy, Seeger? and Carpenter? Just those three. You know, I'd love to be able to talk to more guys, but I thought that I could sort of include the comments almost in depth more if I just stuck to three guys. So I talked to each guy for probably about 10 minutes solid on it and really just made it a first-person type of piece. You know, it wasn't really any of my opinion, but it was more, hey, here's what the guys who are actually dealing with it have to say. And, You know, as you could tell, certainly by the three guys, especially Murphy, it's amazing how much level of thought they put into this. No doubt. Um, And some of the each guy made a comment that really has sparked a lot of conversation here. Let me ask you this question: Why do you think the shifts are only against primarily left-handed hitters? Well, I mean, I think it's kind of they do shift on right-handed hitters, but. You know, like, look at where the second baseman is on a ball to right field. I've seen this with Joey Botto. I mean, he'll hit a massive, you know, just a line shot 40 feet into right field, and the second baseman's out there, and they'll throw him out there by a step. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can't do that from – you can't move the shortstop back out 40 feet (laughs) behind where he normally plays. I mean, he'd need a complete howitzer, you know. (laughs) Albert Pujols, I think, is maybe – the only guy I've seen, and not making fun of him or anything, but I think he's been thrown out on a couple plays like that because he's so slow. But I, I think that's a big part of it, you know, is just the fact that um, it just makes more, you know, the way the field is configured, I just think yeah. it's more effective against left-handed hitters because, you know, everybody over on that side of the field uh, wherever they are, can can throw a guy out at first base. Yeah, you know, that, that, that's that's a, a you know obvious point and a good point. You know that the guy can throw from deep right field and or shallow right field and still get you out at first base. So one of the things I threw out there hypothetically because one of the comments I think it was from Seeger, he essentially said you know if I just bunt it down the third baseline or David Ortiz was the example that the other team is okay with that like they're okay giving up first base and my point was if that's the case why would I ever allow say Mike Trout or Aaron Judge or Stanton to swing the bat if the philosophy of the organization is I'll just give you first base because the next guy is going to have to hit another single you know I'm surprised that these teams are so willing just to say yeah you can have a single on us well keep in mind I mean as Matt Carpenter and Seeger both said and I watch these guys when they hit. The third baseman for the first two pitches of the at bat is standing there at third base. So it's not like they could just, you know, I know the, the classic thing is the entire side of the left, you know, left side is open. And with Joey Gallo, you know, maybe it is. But with a lot of these guys, the third baseman is still there for the first two pitches. So, and then when they move over, there are two strikes. So it's pretty hard for a guy to say, okay, they're moved over, I can definitely get a bunt down on this pitch, you know? Yeah. And what Carpenter said to me is, there's really a small area that I can aim toward. You know, it's it's that shortstop hole. And as all these guys point out, teams pitch to the shift. I mean, they if you're a left-handed hitter, they're not going to be throwing you soft stuff away. They're going to throw you cutters on the hands and sliders in at your feet. And then you're saying... Putting it in play is, is a challenge enough, but then I'm going to put it in play to a particular spot on the field to try to get it through there. You know, and uh, I've had a lot of people say to me and write in and say, well, why don't you, you know, Rod Carew did it and, and Tony Gwynn did it and Wade Boggs did it. Well, they're among the greatest hitters in baseball history. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, and they didn't get shifted, but. Uh, you know, I think those are things that people 
don't really take into account. And the only other thing I would say is that, you know, people say, oh, just bunt and they won't shift you anymore. So hypothetically, Joey Votto for the next four days drops down a bunt and gets a single. On the fifth day, do you think they're going to say, well, we're going to play him straight up and we're never going to shift him anymore? Right. I mean, do you really think that's going to be the case? Uh, uh, I, I believe me. I'm I with you so. on that, Jerry, where people say all the time, like when Ryan Howard was here, why doesn't he just lay a bunt down? Well, you know, and I didn't even give the answer that I guess Seeger gave, which is the other team's okay with that. It's, look, number one, it's not easy to hit a 98 mile power pitch. The pitcher's pitching you inside so that you can't hit it the other way. And the bunt, they're saying, all right, you want a bunt, that's fine. Um, I find it fascinating, though, that these uh, the game is essentially, the mindset has become a single is almost a useless, <laughs> I, I think useless yeah. might be too strong, but that a single is almost a meaningless uh, at bat for some of these guys. Like, if I get on first base, uh, I didn't do my job. Well, yeah, that's really interesting. And I think what Murphy said is that, look, the way it is now with pitchers throwing as hard as they do, you don't. it's tougher for guy teams to string together three singles, you know, in an inning. So if I get a single, like Murphy said, or, or Seeger said, if I get a single, I can't steal second. So if the next guy gets a single, then we need three singles in an inning. And statistically now, with contact being so bad, that's becoming progressively harder to do. And, you know, what Carpenter said to me is, look, if I aim for that, you know, 5.6 hole between second and third that's empty, just because I'm trying to aim for it doesn't mean I'm going to do it every time. You know, he made a point. He said, they play, uh, you've seen it, they'll play the infield back uh, with a runner on third and one out, and sometimes they say, look, just hit a ground ball to the infield and you'll get a guy in. And he said, a lot of guys can't even do that now. (laughs) So, you know, to try to hit it to a specific spot, I think, is, again, it's just not as easy as people think. And the mindset, Jerry Krasnick's with us, ESPN.com. Great piece on hitters explaining, you know, uh, their mentality against the shift. He's saying, if I go four for four with four singles, I I don't know that I really had a good day. Well, I think what he said was, you know, look, I, the, the point is, if I try to do that four times, what's the guarantee that each time I'm going to be able to do that and get the four hits? He said, so probably, say I try to do it and I get, probably I'm going to succeed one or once or twice. Mm-hmm. Yet best, you know? So I'm going to go one for four or two for four with two singles. Whereas if I just take my regular swing and try to hit it in the air or a line drive, I might go two for four with a home run and a double, you know? Yeah. So uh, that's the other thing I think is just the, the perception that just because it's there, I think people look at the shift and they see the left side of the infield being completely open. But when you look at shifts, I've started to do it. A lot of times the third baseman is over there yeah. or he is over on the left side. So it's not that often where you see all four guys you know, to second base and the right of second base. So, Jerry, is it crazy to suggest, I brought this hypothetical question up, that if Mike Trout came up and I'm okay with giving up a single, why don't I just walk him and say, I'm not going to let you hit a double or a home run. I'm going to give you a single or walk you. Why Is that mentality outrageous to think? Well, I don't know that it really is related to the shift or anything. I think it's just related to the fact of, look, your calculus is that Mike Trout's the best hitter in baseball, and he's still probably going to make an out seven out of ten times. You know, yeah. So you're better off trying it. Now, with runners on base or certain situations, obviously, you're going to be more careful. It depends on the time in the game or whatever. But, you know, why walk Mike Trout in the first inning, uh, you know, there are certain cases where you would, but I just think, uh, you know, and the other thing I think that people didn't really take into account was Daniel Murphy never said, I won't try to hit the ball to left center field or move it around. What he said is ground balls just don't aren't hits anymore, <laughs> you know, because of the way teams study you and the quality of defenders. So I'm really aiming to either hit a line drive or a fly ball. Um, you know, a line drive first, and if you miss hit it, hit a fly yeah. ball. But 
that's why they get on these guys like Hosmer and they say he hits too many balls on the ground because it's just tougher for those to be hits anymore. You mentioned less contact in the game. How much of an impact is the shift on the fact that there is less contact and the overall philosophy that these guys have at the plate? You know, I think it's probably a factor. I mean, I do. And, you know, people have said to me, well, these guys don't want to hit singles because they're not paid to hit singles. And people almost look at that as uh, an indictment of the players. Well, if I'm a player, like Mark Grace, for instance, I started thinking about this. What did he hit? You know, 320 every year, 310 with 10 homers, you know. Now he probably wouldn't make any money. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're a guy like that or you can't get a job or you're not going to get paid, aren't you going to try to hit more home runs or more power? You know, teams have done a calculus on this. They've done analyses that show, hey, a guy with a low batting average, but, you know, this many homers or this many extra bases or this kind of isolated power is worth more to our win total than a contact hitting first base type so if you know that's the case and you're going to be easier to get a job and you're going to get paid five times more then why wouldn't you try to hit like that jerry krasick espn here on the boardwalk honda hotline it's a great piece um uh, yeah you mentioned mark grace a guy like wally joiner you guys that can hit 300 in their sleep but just were not power hitters so james loney you know uh, yeah joe Joe mauer now you know joe mauer now not to joe mauer when he got paid but you know, a guy who hits 300 but doesn't drive the ball, if these guys are out on the free agent market, you really don't see them getting a whole lot of attention anymore. It's fascinating. Um, now, I'm not one of the guys that suggests they should ban the shift. I mean, basketball has zone defenses and boxing ones and man-to-mans, and football's got nickels and dimes and three-fours and four-threes. <laughs> so baseball, you know, it's taken them this long to come up with a defense to try to do something to the offense, but – do you think that this will philosophy will end up working? The home run and the double is the only way to go. You know, I'm not sure because it makes for kind of boring baseball you know, to me. You don't see, you know, I mean, what, what's more fun? You know, the inning like the Reds had last night where Votto's getting a double with three guys on and teams are stringing together a bunch of hits. I mean, to me, that's more exciting than, you know, three strikeouts and two home runs in an inning. Um, So I'm not really sure. I I think it's a new phenomenon. You know, it's really not that – it's a pretty new thing, and I think baseball has to figure out what it wants to do. I mean, I've had people say that they think that baseball could go to an alignment where, you know, two guys have to be on the right and two guys have to be on the left, or every guy has to have a foot on the dirt, you know. I'm not 100% sure. I I don't really know that I like that because it's taking away creativity. And, you know, then it's like saying, well, you can only use this many pitches a game or you can only do this. I I don't like hard and fast rules like that, but I'm not really sure what to do. When Bryce Harper is uh, hitting 215 and Scott Boris is complaining that it's because of the shift, you know, it's – it's having a big impact on the game, that's for sure. Do you think it will end up having an impact on Bryce Harper's uh, free agency? You know, I tend to – I mean, if I'm going to give $400 million to a guy, I don't know that I want to give it to a guy who's hitting two fifteen, no right, matter what his exactly. age says. <laughs> um, and you could look at all the other statistics, but to me you also look at – I mean, I think that's sort of a separate story and – I think Bryce Harper is a great player, and he's going to get probably deserves you know one of the biggest contracts in history for a free agent because he's so young and he has really done a lot of great things. But if I'm a team and I'm going to spend that kind of money, you know, I I tend to look at that and say, geez, he didn't really handle that walk here that well. So I wonder if I want to invest that kind of money. I mean, that being said, you know. Is he going to get three hundred million or more? Probably, you know. But is he going to get five hundred million or something like Scott wants him to get? You know that that might be uh, might be a little bit of a difference. Right there now, in, in your in your piece, Jerry, um, I got I'm pulling it up real fast here, but I remember a quote from Boris in the piece. Right? Didn't he say something about uh, that left handed yeah, guys a- were being discriminated <laughs> against? Like, I guess it was kind of yeah. like tongue in cheek, but 
you know, that lefties. No, I don't think it was tongue in cheek. I think it was something he has said that he sounds like he wants to ban them. Now, you know, he mentioned Bryce, but he also represents Chris Davis, you know, who I'm not sure it matters whether there's a shift on or not. You know, if he can't (laughs) make contact at all, then, you know, I, I don't know. It, to me, that sounded like Scott just trying to sort of rationalize Put it on the, radar. the contact negotiations. Yeah, and just sort of get that out there as a factor, you know, that, that people should consider. Now, so, now you uh, spoke to these... I don't really have a huge stance one way or the other on this thing. I just do think that people tend to oversimplify it, and I thought by talking to these hitters at least, these guys are smart, accomplished hitters. They're not you know, guys who just go up there, home run or nothing. And even they're saying, man, it's hard. And I have to think of a way to try to approach this to beat it. And there's a lot of things that go into it that people just don't really think about all the time. Right. Cause uh, I-, I was going to ask you just, you spoke to these three guys. Did they specifically feel like, I don't think it's fair that teams can do this against me? No, I mean, the, the, of the three guys, I think you could tell by the quote, Seeger was sort of like, I just play baseball. You know, that's for smarter people than me to figure out. Murphy seemed to almost think that nothing should be done because this is the way they've adapted in baseball. And, you know, it's just something that people are going to have to figure out. The only guy of the three, I think, was Carpenter, who kind of said, look, you know, if you are going to try to combat this, maybe they do look at, at messing with the shifts and, getting rid of the shifts or modifying them. So he was the only one who at least acknowledged it as maybe something to consider. And I haven't taken a big poll, but, uh, you know, I just think, I, I mean, it's amazing other than the DH, maybe even more than the DH, <laughs> how many, I, I think most fans probably think, Hey, figure it out. You know, we don't need baseball to legislate this. Uh, if you're a good hitter, you, you should try to figure out a way to, to counteract it. Jerry Krasnick, ESPN.com on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Do you think that right-handed hitters have a similar philosophy as well, that a double and a homer is basically the be-all, end-all anymore? Or is this just yeah, specific sure. to lefties because of the shift? Yeah, I mean, look, there, there was a uh... – there was a former player, I think, who used to wear a uh, a T-shirt, I think, that said something like single sock. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, look, if, if if teams are paying big money to, you know, you saw the contract Mark Trumbo got, and you, you saw the contract Chris Davis got, you know. Um, if you don't have that kind of power uh, and you're not going to get paid, then you're going to say, hey, you know, what can I do to get more backspin or what can I do to get this? So I think there is – teams are in making – you know, giving you an incentive to try to do it. It's kind of hard to say to the players, well, don't do it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, but I think that's one of the problems is we've just gotten into this kind of game where fans don't really like watching guys who can't make adjustments. And I, I think there are issues like how many guys have a two-strike approach now or – you know, and there are guys, Mac Carpenter told me, he said, I hate striking out. Like, people think hitters don't care. He said, I hate it, but every year there's more guys who throw 98, and it's harder. My strikeout totals keep going up, yeah. even though I hate it. So, you know, just say hitters don't care, but I do think there are some hitters who just go up there looking at hit home runs and don't make adjustments. And, you know, so, but that that isn't all hitters. Uh, It's a great piece. Uh, Check it out at uh, ESPN.com. Follow Jerry on Twitter at Jay Krasnick so you can uh, get the link right there. A couple quick baseball questions for you, Jerry. Obviously, the Phillies are in first place, but no one's showing up. We're going to be talking to Kevin Cooney later on about his piece in Forbes, but will that change, or is the game, as we mentioned, a tough watch? I think that's probably part of it, Uh, Mike. I think, you know, look, this has been sort of a – an Eagles, uh, Sixers, you know, have sort of taken over the imagination. And I do think sometimes there's a sort of residual year after effect. You know, maybe if this year people say, wow, uh, you know, Aaron Nola wins 20 and Reese Hoskins really is good. And, you know, they look and, and they sort of develop their favorite, then you'll see it reflected in season tickets. And, you know, next year typically is the time when it goes up. And if the Phillies, you know, look, the Phillies, what, they went into the season probably expecting to win maybe 70, 75 games. So 
I think it takes a little bit of time to catch up. But I do think there is a I do think baseball has an entertainment value problem, you know, with uh, with the lack of action and the strikeouts and the, the inability of guys to put balls in play. Uh, you think the Phillies uh, are in this for the long haul? Do they have staying power? Yeah, I could see them be. I mean, I think Washington's sort of a – they're just an enigmatic team that I don't think is as good as people think. They just i, I got to be sold on them, and, and you just wonder when they're going to do it. And So I think the Phillies and Braves are going to kind of hang around. I, I don't know if the Phillies are going to get there. I think they're a year away still, you know, a, a real front-line pitcher away, and – they have some other things to do but look if the Phillies win even 85 games and fall short of the playoffs after what they've been doing uh and go into this winter and can really make a run at the Harpers and the Machados I mean they're they're trending definitely in the right direction so whether they get to the postseason or not I'm not sure but they've definitely taken a step forward and like I said if they're 85 wins it's it's still a good year and if they get 92 wins and win the division or something, then it's a, then it's a bonanza every year, and it's a, it's a great sign of uh, what's to come here. Jerry, uh, you mentioned, uh, if you follow Jerry on Twitter, at Jay Krasnick, uh, regarding Machado, uh, you know, trade in season for him, wait to the off season. Uh, I saw you tweet a theory that you heard from somebody that said the Orioles won't trade him because of the All-Star game being in D.C. and the television situation down there that's going on. I mean, everybody seems to have a theory on Manny Machado. So what do you – he's the, uh, what, Kawhi Leonard of baseball right now. What is going to happen with Manny Machado? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I was saying was I didn't think – you know, I really wondered whether they would trade him before the All-Star break. Just right. Because – you know, it's hard to go to Washington and go there when you hate the Nationals and you're in this big TV fight and you're only, you know, your marquee player is wearing a Dodgers uniform. That's probably, <laughs> it's probably not what the Orioles want to do when they're 40 games under 500, you know. But, I mean, I have a hard time believing he's not going to get traded. I, I just think whether it's – I still think the Dodgers and the Brewers, uh, I think Arizona is a team that would love to have them, but probably – doesn't have enough and I, I think this Yankees Red Sox stuff is more eyewash personally I, I think the Yankees need a starting pitcher and I think Boston is jumping in just because they're seeing well New York's involved <laughs> so um, but I think he'll get traded I, I don't think he's going to come to Philly I just uh, it to me it's just if you want to sign him in the offseason then go ahead but you know I don't see the point in giving up you know it depends on what you have to give up but if you have to give up take a huge bite out of your farm system for two months of a guy i just don't think the phillies are are one piece away where that's going to be the piece to you know win them a world series this year jerry krasick everybody here on the boardwalk honda hotline a really good piece the fodder has been fantastic the last couple of days so much engagement and reaction uh about the shift uh, and the Phillies in first place. Who would have thought right here on the Sports Pass? Jerry, thanks so much for jumping on, pal. Thanks, Mike.